So let's go over to our uh, charts over here and get a picture of what the uh, chi-square looks like mathematically first. And so we see here the expression for chi-square. Uh, this is a gamma function here. Uh, this constant in front of the remainder of the uh, function is put in here to guarantee that the area under the curve is equal to 1. Chi-squared is constrained to be from 0 to plus infinity. Chi-squared can never be negative. This distribution was uh, studied and explored in, in our context and in the context of um, uh, what are called contingency tables and quantitative data and so forth by a very, very famous statistician by the name of Carl Pearson. Carl Pearson is one of the giants of uh, statistic. Uh, he started out his career, believe it or not, as a lawyer and then became uh, fascinated by the problems of science and uh, making inferences from data. Um, he wrote back uh, before the turn of the century a very famous short text, which is worth reading even today, called The Grammar of Science. Uh, he's also, of course, uh, very famous in the statistical fraternity as being the founding editor of the journal called Biometrica. Uh, Biometrica is an absolutely superb journal. Uh, both uh, mathematical statisticians and applied statisticians would be quick to admit that. He's also famous for his uh, construction of the tables of the incomplete gamma and the incomplete beta function. These were done back uh, in the early 20s. Uh, actually, the labor on these began before World War I and finished shortly after World War I. This was a prodigious calculation. He had scores of people uh, adding and subtracting and working the most humble kinds of desk calculators, filling out these tremendous tables. They were of supreme importance in the practice of statistics in the early 20s. Of course, today, uh, you could get the uh, tables of the incomplete beta, the incomplete gamma function by pressing a knob or, uh, you know, asking, making a simple format request or something of that kind, and the booming computers would just spin them out for you with nothing flat. But back earlier in the century, uh, this gentleman was largely responsible for getting those important tables tabulated. He was a giant and occasionally a rather militant and uh, pretty harsh giant on students and others around him. But we, he deserves our respect and uh, deepest regards. I tell you what, let's look at some chi-square distributions. Uh, here's a whole collection of chi-square distributions here on the uh, chart. We see that um, the chi-square distribution is constrained uh, to start at zero, and it can go all the way up to plus infinity. And I have a whole bunch of chi-square distributions. There's a different chi-square distribution for every value of nu. Here's the, here's the chi-square distribution when nu is equal to 1. Here's the chi-square when nu is equal to 4. There's the chi-square with nu 10. There's the chi-square with nu 20. An interesting characteristic about these chi-square distributions are what is their mean? And you'll notice the distribution for nu equal 20 would balance at 20. The mean of that distribution is 20. The mean of this distribution is 10. It's a skewed distribution, and it would balance at 10. The mean of this distribution is 4. It turns out that the parameter nu, the degrees of freedom, also tell us what the mean uh, of the chi-square distribution happens to be. Another novel thing about the uh, chi-square distribution is what happens is nu gets large. See, here's nu equal 20. Suppose we had nu equal to 50. What do you think the chi-square distribution begins to look like when uh, nu is equal to 50? Let you know the secret. It converges to the normal. Matter of fact, it's beginning to look mighty normal there with nu only equal to 20. So it does eventually begin to look like a normal distribution, but for small values of nu, it of course is spectacularly different from a normal distribution. Okay, now that we've learned the equation which associates the statistic s squared with the parameter sigma squared, and now that we've learned something about the chi-square distribution, its mathematical form, and of course the fact that it's been tabulated and so forth, we're in a position to actually do what's called a test of significance. So let's do a test of hypothesis or test of significance. Suppose I say that we have a collection of five observations and that S squared was equal to two and a half. And let's uh, further say that this sample of five observations was taken from a normal distribution and that the variance of this normal distribution was equal to five. So what's happened to us is the two and a half with four degrees of freedom. That's our S squared. And some character is declared, I declare that sigma squared is equal to five. Okay, what's our attitude towards that hypothesized value for sigma squared? Well, now, what do we know? Let's get that key equation down. We know that nu S squared equals chi squared sigma squared. And what I'm going to do now, 
I'm going to solve for the value of chi squared, which I would get upon substituting two and a half for s squared, four for nu, and five for sigma squared. And we see that substitution uh, right now. Okay, four times two and a half equals chi squared times five, and so we have a chi squared equal to two. Now observe that subscript on chi squared right there. That's subscript four. That tells me which of the many chi-square distributions I'm dealing with. I'm dealing with a chi-square which came out of a distribution with chi-square with four degrees of freedom. And why, pray, is it four degrees of freedom? Because that, it's four because that's the number of degrees of freedom in S-squared. So I'm dealing with a chi-square with four degrees of freedom. Okay, gang, let's look at a chi-square with four degrees of freedom and see what's happening. And so here we have a lovely chi-square with four degrees of freedom. It's a skewed curve. It would balance at four. And there we have it. Now, what happened to us? We observed a value of chi-square with four degrees of freedom equal to two. And our problem now is, what's the probability that we can find a value of chi-square less than or equal to four? We're involved, as we'll see shortly, in determining the area under the curve uh, from two.